today. Uh, I'm Tracy Mayleaf. I'm an, a security researcher uh, with the Krebs Stamos Group. And uh, my talk today is information literacy makes for better information. Uh, basically, I want you to understand how to be smarter uh, uh, to, to, um, to absorb information uh, because things aren't always at the, as they seem. There's an image here that if you look at it one way, it's the profile of a young woman with a, a feather, you know, at, on her head. And if you look at it a different way, it's uh, an, you know, an, an older woman who has her head covered. So you can have one image and get two different uh, things out of it. And that's what's really tricky about absorbing information. Uh, next slide, please. So again, real quick, I'm Tracy Mayleaf. You may know me as InfoSec Sherpa. Uh, I, I spoke at this conference last year virtually and hope one of these days to be there uh, with you in person. That would be great. Uh, and I'm just thrilled to, to do what I can to help uh, cybersecurity professionals and students in Africa, and you know, especially in Nigeria, uh, just get, get your career started, enhance your career so you grow. Uh, I'm going to try to go through these quickly. I have a lot of slides. So I'm coming to you today from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, USA. This photo was taken actually just yesterday by a friend of mine. Um, oh, <laughs> okay. Um, uh, d please don't advance. May, let me tell. Let me tell you when I need to advance, though. Thank you. <laughs> So that's my fair city. I just wanted to show you. Okay, next slide. So you might be wondering, yes, there we go. Um, you know, there are, you know, wondering why is this important? Why did I want to speak to you about this today? Uh, so as uh, Mr. Latif spoke about and as Dr. Bello spoke about right before me, uh, you all have elections coming up in 2023. There's also... Uh, information, misinformation about health safety and internet safety that's out there. So I want to share with you some tip, go back please, some tips and strategies on how to, to better absorb this information and make sure you're not being misled. Next slide. And this is important because there, there's already disinformation in Africa. This is a slide here from uh, uh, showing where it's been documented that Russian disinformation campaigns have spread over over Africa. So they may not be uh, giving information that's in your best interest. So this is, you know, this is very real. This is going on, you know, now this is current. Next slide. Another problem is, is with health information. You know, other other countries are exporting their disinformation to West Africa. And that's not fair, right? You're being inundated with bad information and you have to defend against it somehow. Next slide. Uh, there's also something called digital colonialism. And this is something where, and I, I pulled this quote from, from this article, you know, if, if companies from outside of Africa are controlling the telecommunications, then how can you be sure that the messages that are getting to you are, are accurate and correct and not disinformation? So this is what this talk is about, is just trying to help give you some defenses uh, so that you can protect yourselves from bad information. Because as you saw from these three slides, it's, you know, it is it is upon you <laughs> it is it is descended upon you and you know it's really hard to fend off next slide please so just want to quickly cover some ground here what this talk isn't is isn't any uh commentary i don't have any agenda political or otherwise i certainly cannot speak with any authority about your elections and i don't plan to so that you know my mention of your election was that's all i'm going to talk about it is the fact that it's happening next year uh what this talk is is i'm going to give you some tips and strategies on how to be a better consumer of information because that's what we are right we are consumers of information and it's, it can be very tricky and there's a lot of things to consider. So I'm hoping that between uh, what, what Mr. Latif said and also what Dr. Bello said, my tips and strategies can help bring all this together for you 
to protect yourselves and others, whether it be your family, friends, your company, your, your organizations, your places of worship, et cetera. Uh, next slide. So, you know, buckle up. <laughs> There's some rough water ahead. Uh, that, the two flags there, that's the hurricane warning flags in maritime. Um, you know, this can be a, a little rough and it can be a little scary, but I got you. I'm here to, to help you and give you tools. So, um, you know, put on your life jacket, you know, put on, put on your, um, you know, your bathing suit <laughs> and let's uh, jump into the water and figure out how we can defend ourselves against all this, this bad information. Next slide, please. So there's an expression, you know, pick your poison. Uh, and there's actually three types of information poison. You have misinformation, disinformation, and malinformation. And in just a second, I am going to define each of these, but I want you to understand that there are different kinds of bad information and they each have different motivations and ulterior motives and things like that. So just be aware that there are different kinds. Next slide, please. An easier way to remember this is MDM, misinformation, disinformation, malinformation. So um, again, I want you to understand some misinformation by definition, it's not true, but it's not supposed to be harmful. And then you have disinformation, which is intentionally harmful. But what complicates matters is that oftentimes disinformation is built from a a platform, a ground level of misinformation. So someone who wants to spread disinformation will take misinformation and then make it causing harm. So that's kind of complicated because it's, uh, it's, it's, um, you know, it's based on misinformation. And then you have malinformation, which this can get very uh, confusing because it is, based on fact, but it's used out of context. It's used to mislead you. And malinformation in conjunction with mis and disinformation can make things very muddy, trying to understand what the truth is. So next slide, please. First, I wanna talk about misinformation. And I'm gonna give you some, we're gonna have some fun examples here, um, you know, to, to make, uh, Taste, taste a little bit less sour to understand what, what all this bad information is doing. Next slide, please. So here's an example of misinformation. Uh, last, last April, this, this person uh, tweeted that this was a list of Nigerians in InfoSec. And there's my name on the list. So that's incorrect. I am not Nigerian, nor am I of Nigerian descent. But I was put on this list. Now I did not get offended. I thought it was I I thought it was sweet, and I did reply to the person. I said, "Oh, I'm afraid you know you made a mistake. I shouldn't be on this list." And their very sweet, kind response was, "Oh, you know you you're very active in the Nigerian infosec community, and I you know I I know that I put you there." So I thought that was great. I wore it as a badge of honor. I was about to run out and go get myself a gele and, you know, just just embrace it. So it's it's not correct information, but it's not bad either. That's fine. If I am an honorary Nigerian, I'll take it. Great. So this is an example of misinformation. It's not correct, but it's not harmful. And there you go. Next slide. So now let's show an example of disinformation. This is something that it's deliberately meant to cause harm. Next slide. Okay, breaking news. I think that the, the jalaf from Ghana is best. I know I'm wading into dangerous waters here, but this is an example of disinformation. Um, I actually do not have opinion, <laughs> an, an opinion on which jalaf is best, but 
this is the kind of thing that, that people will create to try to discredit me and say, oh, she really can't be an honorary Nigerian. She thinks that Ghana's jollof is best. And if you'll notice, I, I put this in the, the form of TV breaking news because that's a lot of times how we get information, right? Is from, from a, a source, a media source that is making it look official. It's making it look like news. But sometimes things aren't news. Sometimes things are manufactured to look like news. So this is the the scandalous news being put out that I really think that that the uh, Gahanian jollof is is best. Let's uh, next slide. So the malinformation again is based on fact. But it's trying to uh, to ca still cause harm, which can be even more confusing. So, what's our example of malinformation? Next slide. So, this is true. This is a real photo <laughs> of when I tried to make Niger Nigerian jollof. Um, but what's the malinformation? That's the that's the fact. But what's the the bad side to it? Oh, that I used humans. <laughs> that's not chicken. That's a human. Well, that's not just that's just not true. Somebody is just trying to slander me here. But again, somebody can take something that's based in fact, make it look like breaking news and make it look legitimate. Next slide, please. So whether it's misinformation, disinformation or malinformation, uh, notice I now I used a real a real Twitter image as well. Bad information meant to manipulate you can be presented as news, can be presented as truthful. So you really need to use critical thinking skills. You know, is is this correct? Could this be true? Where are they getting the information from? And I'm going to dig into that a little bit more. Next slide. So what's the point? What's my point? Um, you know, I just can't say this enough. Having being fed bad information, misinformation, deliberately bad information could affect your health, could affect your career, could affect your safety. Uh, you know, could it affect you know the the elections in in your country or any country? Um, it's it's important to really use critical thinking skills to get to the root of the information that is being presented to you, and. You know, not to accept something that's presented as news necessarily is true. I want you to be skeptical, raise an eyebrow, think it through. Is it really true? What is someone's motivation for sharing this information? What are they really trying to say? Now, please don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not trying to say uh, that you shouldn't trust anything, but you know, we have these, these expressions in inferiority, right? We have trust but verify is one model. And then we also have zero trust architecture. So you can either decide to trust the information that's being given to you, but follow up and verify it, or you can choose not to trust anything and do all of the verification yourself. Whichever you choose, just remember, be cynical about information you see and make sure that it really, that someone isn't trying to uh, you know, to social engineer you. It's much like fishing, right? Someone's going to tell you something and they'll want you to fall for it. So what does this boil down to? Next slide, please. Hopefully you know this, this psalm, this ice cube reference. You need to check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> you need to understand that, you know, no one's going to do this for you. This is something that you need to do. Friends and families, or maybe even companies, may not want to do it for themselves. But it's my strong opinion, as an information security professional, that you know, knowing what information is correct is also part of our 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 livelihood of our being, because bad information can lead to cybercrime, can lead to being compromised. So this is why why it's important to check these things. Next slide. So any uh, Sherlock Holmes fans in the house, you may uh, need to become a detective and that can be fun. And that's also a, a foundation of information security, isn't, isn't it? Doing research, looking into things, investigating. It's really no different than looking at, at network logs. You, you, get, you get a piece of information on a network log and then you have to look into it. You have to investigate it. Is this a false positive? Is this a false negative? Is this really what it seems? That's it's all you're doing. If if you think that this is very overwhelming, it's really not that much different than than 
looking after computer network, which many of you in the room already do. Next slide. So these are some tools. I'm gonna to give you some tools to help you understand the information uh, that is being presented to you. Next slide, please. So the first tool I wanna to give you is understanding provenance. Um, now the photo there is a gorgeous photo of a lavender field in Provence in France. Uh, so Provence, France is not provenance, but it is a French word. Provenance means origin. You know, where did something come from? So for example, if you see an article that is from Reuters, you know, the newswire, uh, but it was republished on maybe say a local newspaper website of yours. If you see that the, the origin venance of that news was the Reuters website, I encourage you to, to find that article on the Reuters website. Why? Oftentimes when, when news items are sent out over the wire and re republished, they could be edited. I have seen this myself multiple times. I have compared articles side by side where information has either been omitted or added or changed around in context when it's been republished on another site. So whenever you're looking at, especially a news item, make sure you're getting it from the original source to avoid any instances of that information being changed. So you want to think of the provenance of the information. What is the origin of this information? And, oh, no, that's okay. Time, we can go next. Time to check. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Um, hopefully you know Flavor Flav. He was famous for wearing a giant clock. Another thing to keep in mind is Look at the time and the date of something posted online. Now, it might not always be obvious, but somebody might try to repost or retweet old news and make it seem new, which is, is misleading uh, because that information could have since been, been ruled as, as false, but they're resurfacing old information. Sometimes you need to look at the source code of a website uh, which you know can be you know easily done on a browser, um, but it's it's not right. People are posting information should be very clear about the date, and you know, and you might be thinking, well, why does time matter? Well, if it's uh, an incident that's ongoing, a news incident, for example, that might be changing very quickly, news from 15 minutes ago may already be outdated. So it's very important to understand when you're looking at something, when is this from? If it's something, you know, if you're if you're looking at something that's ongoing news, is this information 15, 30, 60 old, and when is it from? So time and date are very important to see. It's not always obvious. You might have to dig around a little bit to get it, but it, it is worth it to make sure you know that you're getting in current information. Next slide. And a good, a good example of this is there's this photo. It's, uh, you know, two children, uh, one is saluting a tank filled with Ukrainian soldiers. And it's, you know, it's a heartwarming photo, right? Uh, this was, was circulating about a month ago, maybe two months ago, and it was getting a lot of traction online, but it's an old photo. I did a very easy reverse image search and found out that it's from 2016. Now, some people may say, well, what's the difference? You know, it's it's still supporting Ukraine and it's a nice photo. Okay, but it's not current. It's not it's not pertaining to the current crisis in in Ukraine. It's not it's not accurate, and it's and it's just there to to draw up, uh, you know, sentiment. Um, and it, but it's just, it's not correct. It's, it's old and that can happen a lot. Old photos can be resurfaced and brought out as new or doctored photos can be presented as evidence. So you really need to you know look at reverse image searches and other clues to see, was this photo used elsewhere and is it old? Next. 
And then we have social media, <laughs> right? Uh, social media over the world, many countries have their own social media platforms uh, that, you know, there's, you know, there's VK in Russia, which is quote unquote, the Russian Facebook. So for every uh, US based social media platform, there are also many others in their, you know, in individual countries. Latin America has a lot of their own native Portuguese and Spanish language social media platforms. Thing, news can spread like wildfire on social media, right? Now, a lot of those companies are, are trying to do better with having uh, uh, responsibility for the information and ways to dispute if information is bad. But this is how things spread so quickly anymore. And there's there are sites that present themselves to be activists and, uh, you know, concerned citizens posting things that are wrong and incorrect, but a lot of people just believe them. Well, it was on Facebook, so I should believe it. That's really not a good reason <laughs> to believe something. Next slide. Uh, another problem is word of mouth. A lot of times things can just, you know, be said to you, well, and somebody will say to you, well, I heard this. And it's, you know, it's easy to fall into that right? You may be reading things online or somebody might read something online and, and tell you something, but they're not getting the whole story or they have a bias. So then they read something and they only get their side out of it. So this is a little bit harder, right? What if it's, what if it's your auntie and you don't want to be disrespectful and say, no, auntie, that's, that's wrong. The, the rain, the rain isn't purple, <laughs> you know, and she's saying rain is purple. I read it. I read it on Facebook. Rain is purple. So this can be a little bit more tricky to navigate. Uh, but you know, maybe you can ask questions. Oh, auntie, where did you, do you see that? Where on Facebook did you see that? You know, oh, have you, have you seen other things have they posted? Have, have other things they posted been true? Um, you know, or you can just smile and nod and not engage, <laughs> but just know that word of mouth is also an easy way for things to spread. And here's messaging apps. You see WhatsApp, Viber, Telegram. Um, a lot of times there will be group chats of lots of lots of people who will be sharing misinformation. And these are getting harder to, to uh, monitor because again, they're private chats among groups of friends and family members, but there could be a lot of disinformation, misinformation and malinformation being spread in these apps. And there's actually been a lot of studies done already, specifically in India, about how large groups of family and friends messaging apps have been spreading misinformation, disinformation, malinformation uh, to really detrimental you know, impacts on those people in those groups. Okay, so here you go. You might be thinking, oh boy, I'm I, this is enough. I get, this is scary. <laughs> I'm exhausted. What can I do? So let's, let's try to find, let me show you some resources and things you can do. So when you, when you're consuming information, I want you to think through steps of what someone would do who was writing information. You want to answer these questions, you know, who, what, where, when, why, how. If you're consuming a piece of information that does not hit upon all of these questions, with answers that do seem plausible, <laughs> um, you know, then then maybe consider that this might not be a good source. If they're if they're ignoring the why and the how, that's a big part of the equation, right? So when you're reading something, use this as a mental checklist. Are they addressing these questions and are they addressing them adequately? You know, the is the when listed not as an exact date, but just a vague time period? Is the where listed as something that doesn't sound like a real place? Or it's something from science fiction, like they say, well, on Gallifrey, and if you're not a fan of Doctor Who and don't know that Gallifrey is a, a Doctor Who planet that's made up, they're they're trying to get something over on you. So it's a good idea when you consume information, have these things in mind of, are is this article satisfactorily answering all these questions? Next.
Okay. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with all these different types of citation styles, but this is another thing that I like to keep in mind uh, when I'm reading something. You know, can I fill out a citation form for this publication that it's really, you know, hitting the resources and also when I'm sharing information, I like to make sure that I use some sort of citation. So whether you you use proper citation, like one of these formats or something else. It's also useful when you're sharing information to make sure that you're letting people know from where you're getting information. And if you're not using your own words, use quotation marks to indicate that it's someone else's words. Because also if you're sharing something controversial and you don't want it to look like that you were the person who said that, this is where quotation marks and using citations will differentiate between your thoughts and opinions and something that you're sharing. Next slide. Uh, so this is just an example of a publication that gets it right. They very clearly say what their, what their publication name is, the register. They have uh, clearly where the, the author's name and where they're located. Where someone is located could also indicate bias or, uh, you know, just context. So this is a, a tech article written by someone in San Francisco by, by an author who's there. So, okay, that makes sense. That's very close to Silicon Valley and San Francisco has a lot of tech. Oh, go back. Go back, please. Thank you. Um, and then it, they very clearly indicate the date, the full date, the, the year, the day, the month, and the time in UTC. So I love the register because it's a, they're very clear about, you know, who's writing the article, where they are, and what time. Next article, I mean, next, next slide. So one thing I, I encourage you to do is to triangulate. Triangulate, double check this way. So I'll give you a quick example. Uh, a couple of years ago, when the basketball player Kobe Bryant, uh, unfortunately, and, and eight or nine other folks, unfortunately, died in a helicopter accident, uh, there was only one source that was posting this information, and I wasn't sure whether or not to believe it. You know that this is how rumors start, right? This is this is how things get out of control. So first, I saw the shocking news item, and I kept checking other trustworthy sources like CNN, like Reuters, like BBC, um, knowing that Kobe Bryant lived in Los Angeles. I was looking at the you know the Los Angeles Times, and it took maybe 30 to 45 minutes before uh, other new reputable news agencies were picking up the news because the first one that reported it which is was named TMZ is an entertainment publication now they do have a good track record of of getting news out early when it involves celebrities but still this was a pretty big news item and I wanted to be sure before I believed it and before I shared the information. So I kept checking other sources and finally about 30 to 45 minutes later, those publications that I mentioned started reporting on it as well. BBC, New York Times, CNN, Reuters, Los Angeles Times. But to be extra, I checked another site and, and that was, you know, one of the ones that I mentioned. So this is what I mean by triangulate. And it really doesn't take that much time. Um, in this scenario that I gave you about Kobe Bryant, the longest amount of time was just waiting for someone else, some other publication to mention it. So if more time had passed without any other news agencies reporting it, then that would make me suspicious that this news wasn't wasn't real because no one else was reporting on it. So this is why triangulation is important f with re reputable sources because you want to make sure because uh, they're not going to stake stake their reputation on posting something incorrect, not a reputable news source. So that's why you want to double check. Are other in agencies reporting this? You know, let's see now. Um, you know, the Basketball Association, the National Basketball Association, waited until the next day to post something because they're not a news source. They're they're in a you know, professional association. So this is why I was sticking with news sources to see what was going on. And unfortunately, it, it turned out to be true and it was a, a terrible accident. But just think about triangulation to double check information. Um, oh, 
I guess I, my time, let's just quickly go through um, the last few of my slides here. Um, I have some resources where you can get some good information about understanding misinformation, disinformation, malinformation, how to combat it. This is from the US. Next slide. There's a Canadian source. Whoops. Next slide. I have a next. Oh, there we go. Thank you. So there's a Canadian one that's really good. Um, next slide. Okay. Um, I listed all the Five Eyes group. Five Eyes. Uh, Canada, Britain, New Zealand, Australia, they are a consortium of cybersecurity groups, so they're going to have good information about misinformation, disinformation. And then on the right-hand side of the page, I listed some African-centric uh, organizations that can also help give you tools and tips about combating MDM. Next slide. Uh, I, I, the slides can be distributed and I have some more links here to information. Next slide. Um, this is, if I had more time, I would give some parting thoughts, but instead let's just go ahead. Um, another th thing to keep in mind is, is the think, you know, a wreath up oh, next slide. Aretha Franklin famously saying, you better think, um, you know, you think about this acronym, you know, is, is something posted? Is it true? Is it helpful or is it hurtful? Is it inspiring or is it trying to keep you down? Is it really necessary or is it just salacious? And, you know, is it, is it, is it kind or is it going after someone? Because, next slide, like I started off in the beginning, not everything you see is always true. You know, magicians want to convince us that there was, you know, they pulled a rabbit out of a hat. That's that's not always the case. That's not really what's happening. So just uh, last slide, please. Uh, so again, I apologize for going, going over. Um, thank you for your time. I hope this was helpful. There's a lot of links in here uh, that should be a, of use. This is a photo of me in, in South Africa with a friend that I met. <laughs> and uh, uh, please connect with me on, on Twitter. I'm InfoSec Sherpa. I also have my link tree there, which has a list of past talks I've done or, or other articles. And uh, I'm just really honored to speak with you here today. Uh, apologies for going over, but I hope this was helpful and I, I hope to hear from you online.